Thank you for attending ClearFly's portal training, management, support, and provisioning dashboard. My name is Tom Hall, and I will be your host for the next 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, we will be covering in this session um, checking your user permission levels. If you have administrative rights, we'll also go over adding users and editing their permissions, as well as account access, review and project and orders tabs. And uh, we'll also just briefly touch on the reports tabs that is available. Uh, the detailed explanation of those reports that are available to you uh, are covered in another training session. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you that are attending, I believe you have already uh, been on training sessions, so I am not gonna go over the Zoom buttons uh, and how to ask uh, questions or uh, send a uh, question via the chat function. So let's get right into the ClearFly portal. As all of you are aware, during these training sessions, I will be using a demo portal uh, depending on your permission levels, uh, your portal view may look a little bit different. Um, oh, let's see. All right. So if there are sections on this uh, screen that you do not have access to and you believe that you should have access to it, please reach out to your primary contact at ClearFly uh, and they will verify that they can give you those permission levels. Um, or of course, you can also reach out to whomever the system administrator is within your organization and they can uh, open up those permissions. So during this session, we're gonna be covering the management and support and provisioning dashboard down here. Again, we're not gonna go into great detail uh, regarding the projects or the orders uh, that, that is done in another session. Uh, but what we will do is do a, a quick overview. So let's jump right into that. Uh, if we click on the management dashboard, as always up on the upper top part of the screen, depending on what your permission levels are, that it's gonna look very similar. So the code is your uh, account code or your code within ClearFly, name of your company. If there's a legal name, it's gonna list that as well. The manager is your primary point of contact at ClearFly. If you need their details, you can always click on that or hover over it and it's gonna tell you their email address um, as well as their phone number. These two buttons to the right-hand side, the agent and the unified boot. Again, if you don't have access to those, you're not going to see those, or, or at least not gonna see the view button. If you do have the view button, if you click on the agent view, it's really gonna take you to the sales dashboard, okay? Um, the unified billing is gonna take you to the unified billing dashboard, uh, which we will be covering uh, at a later, well, actually, we're gonna be covering that right after this session. Uh, my time is going to be 3.45, depending on uh, your time zone. Of course, it's going to be at 45 minutes uh, after the hour. All right, so let's go back. What we're really talking about here is uh, this middle section, uh, the tabs, users, account access, projects, orders, payout accounts, reports, and tickets. So let's start with the users tab. Uh, when you log into the ClearFly portal and you click the uh, management dashboard, first thing you're gonna see is a users tab. It is gonna state your name, your username, which is almost always the email, your email address, and it's also gonna list out your permissions. P stands for payouts. So if you don't see a P, you don't uh, have payout account access. S is sales. B is unified billing or billing, and C is customer management, all right? Uh, to manage your own settings, you're gonna click on the manage button. Uh, within this, if you are an administrator, it is going to say yes. If you're an administrator, you can make changes to any of these. If you 
are not an administrator, all it's going to do is tell you what you have permission for. All right. So in this scenario, I'm an administrator, so it says yes, I can toggle that. Uh, sales, yes. Payouts, yes. Unified billing, yes. And customer management. It also gives me the ability to receive notification uh, for suspension notices. So if Clearfly uh, is going to send a suspension notice to a customer because they have not paid their invoice and you want to receive notification for that, um, you should go ahead and click uh, receive suspension notices. Uh, if you're a sales manager and you want to watch all quotes that are created, not just by you, but by any of the people that can create a quote within the sales organization, you can go ahead and, and auto watch quotes. Uh, if you're an administrator, let me go back there. So if you're an administrator and somebody leaves the organization, you can go to their name, click manage, scroll to the bottom, and you can revoke their rights. All right. That removes them from the Clearfly portal and they'll no longer have the access to it. All right, so that's really the users tab. Um, if you have administrative rights, you're going to see a history of all agents that get added, all agents get, that get revoked, and permission levels that have changed. The account access, these are all the accounts, customer accounts that you have access to. Um, it may be a little bit different than what you saw in the sales dashboard under commissionable accounts. Uh, the commissionable accounts are accounts that you re, your organization is receiving a commission for, whereas the management dashboard shows you account access. If you have picked up some customers that uh, you didn't necessarily sell the service to, but maybe you're servicing them now, they're going to show up here. Uh, you may also have some customers that have decided that they're no longer utilizing you as a servicing company and they have revoked your access. So they may not show up here, whereas they may show up under commissionable accounts. So from this tab, you can go ahead and sort by name. Most of you are gonna sort by name. I uh, highly doubt that you folks are going to know the uh, Clearfly account number for each and every one of your customers. But again, uh, you can sort by any one of these columns. All right. Just at a quick glance over to the far right, it will tell you whether you have access to that account or not. Again, if a customer has revoked your access, um, it is going to say enabled no, access none. All right, so that's uh, really he this uh, tab here. If you need to dig into one of these and we wanna take a look at uh, widgets, for example, you're simply just gonna click on the link under their account number and it will take you right to their account, all right? Moving on to the next tab. The next tab is the projects tab. And again, with the project tab, it is going to list out all of the existing projects that you currently have going on. So for this example, ABC Telecom currently has two projects. One is, is uh, project 1001, Dunder Mifflin. And the other ta uh, project is uh, project P1000, which is for widgets, right? There are a lot of reasons why there may be a project. A project is typically uh, for brand new service. However, it can also be because you've added or renewed a uh, customer um, or added an, a service to a customer or renewed them. Uh, so those are really the three reasons, but most often a project is uh, created for a brand new customer. In here, again, you can sort by the project number. Uh, you can sort by the customer's name or their account number as well. And it's also going to tell you which Clearfly project manager is managing that project. And again, if you hover over their name, it's gonna give you their email address directly, all right? 
It's going to tell you whether it's a new project, um, a renewal, or a change. Uh, the stage is going to be pending. Once the project is complete, it will st state complete. All right. The status here, there's a few reasons or a few differences in status. There's normal, which it means that the project has started, it's flowing just fine. Uh, there is jeopardy, which means that some part of the project has uh, generated an error. It could be a porting error or something like that. And in that case, it's going to show as jeopardy. And then there's also a critical error, which means something's happened that the project is just completely stopped. It's not moving forward. Um, it's not been deleted. It has not been closed. And uh, maybe we're at the point where we've posted some questions that we need to have answered before we can move forward. And we have not received any type of feedback uh, in a timely manner, and the status will be moved to critical. All right. The orders tab. The orders are typically a segment of a project. So all of these widget ones, so we got order 100 through 105. If we go back to the projects tab and we go to the uh, P100, which is the widgets project, and look in there, there are all those orders, all right? So orders are typically just a expansion of a project. Uh, a project consists of many of these, and there can be many different types of pro uh, orders, sorry. There's a local port order here. There's a circuit order, which Clearfly really doesn't do circuits anymore. We used to. Uh, we'll do circuits for existing customers that have a circuit. So maybe they're upgrading their circuit or downgrading the circuit. There may be an order number for that. Um, this one here is a toll-free uh, port order in essence. Uh, it functions completely different than a regular local number port order. Uh, the one little catch about a toll-free port order is as soon as that carrier releases that, they're not going to release it on a specific date or a time like a local port order. They just, at their whim, realistically, uh, will go ahead and transfer that toll-free number over to us. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, if your customer is getting a toll-free number, you're gonna wanna program that toll-free number into the phone system uh, right away. And that way it's gonna be there uh, if, they contact you and say, hey, the toll-free number isn't working. Uh, just give us a shout and we'll activate that immediately. We don't get notified that uh, they've transferred it over. They just blindly transfer it. So just, uh, just a little piece of advice uh, regarding toll-freeze right there. Equipment order, if we're shipping a CFAX or maybe we're doing an analog or a PRI handoff uh, and we need to ship a piece of hardware, uh, then there's going to be an equipment order there. Uh, within that equipment order itself, if we look at it and there is a shipping, uh, that uh, a tracking number, it will be listed under that as well. Again, I'm going to go into more of those details during the orders and uh, um, project training, which I believe is going to be coming up so sometime next week, off the top of my head. Oh, there it is, uh, March 24th um, at 7.45 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So like I said, we'll cover these in greater detail at that point. This one, again, it's a, it's a local number order. It's not a port order, which means that uh, the customer is requesting some new new phone numbers, so there's that order as well. And then of course the voice group order, which almost every project is going to have, especially if it's new, and that's really turning up the Clearfly service. Here we can see that almost all of them are pending, which means we haven't started the process yet. Provider issued is really gonna end up, only end up 
showing up under local port orders or toll-free transfer orders. And that's, that's really meaning that re we've requested that number and we're waiting for a response from the, uh, the losing carrier. Once a losing carrier, particularly for a local port order, gives us a uh, confirmed date and time when they're going to transfer those numbers over to us, at that point it's going to say FOC or firm order commitment date. Uh, and it's also going to specify the date and the time. All right. The next tab is a payout accounts tab. Again, if you do not have uh, payout account permission, which again, you don't see a P next to your name under the permissions, then yes, you're gonna see this, you're gonna see the payout account code, but you're not gonna be able to click on to the payout account code link, all right? It will tell you the payout method, which is, you know, typically nowadays is a ACH or direct deposit, and it is also gonna tell you when the next payout is going to happen. And we'll cover this tab uh, later today as well. So in roughly an hour and 15 minutes. The reports tab, incredibly useful. If uh, you wanna go ahead and just kind of dig through those, you can. Um, again, I'm gonna cover those more on the 24th as well. But um, there's some useful, useful reports here. Inbound calling summary. This is going to show you some inbound calling statistic, statistics for your customers. Uh, the customer account report tells you whether they're under contract or they're not. Uh, unified billing is a report for any of your unified billing items um, if you're using unified billing. So if you have costs associated with those items um, and uh, you're selling them at a certain dollar amount, it's gonna tell you your margins. Uh, voice group events, that's gonna list out any events that we're having with uh, particular customers, whether we're having some issues with that connection, if the connection's dropped, or if we're seeing any other types of uh, service-related uh, events. The last tab here is your tickets tab. And again, if we clicked on this, and some of your customers had open tickets. So they could be related to change orders, it could be related to service issues, um, or even just simple billing requests. If there's been a ticket created, it is going to list out all of your tickets for all of your customers under this tab. All right. Um, I mean, that's, that's again, you know, these, these overview classes are fairly quick. Uh, we're about at uh, 20 minutes. Uh, just uh, one last thing as I do with all of these, the very bottom section here, the links at the very bottom of the portal are, are useful, frequently asked questions and knowledge base is going to take you back to the ClearFly portal um, and some relevant information regarding those. The blog link, does not currently using the blog. So as we revamp our website, that may disappear. Documents tab is really the service agreement or the service schedule, which will show um, uh, SLAs or service level agreements that ClearFly offers our customers. So you can always click on that and download it and send it to the customer if you'd like. The tools tab, there's some useful tools on here, local calling areas. If you're selling metered SIP trunks and the customer wants to know what is considered local and what is considered long distance, uh, that's a great spot to go to. Simply gonna click on there, enter the first six digits of their phone number, and it will tell you their local calling area. International rates, same scenario. If a customer uh, wants to know what it's gonna to cost to call certain or specific numbers, we'll say specific numbers, you're gonna click on that, you're gonna enter the phone number they wanna dial and it's gonna tell you the specific rate 
uh, that they're going to be charged. If they're not quite sure of the specific number, but want but know of the countries they're going to call, you can always download the rates. It's going to be a .csv file, and you can send that to them. Lastly, the service verification. Again, with the service verification, the same service verification link is over on the left-hand side of your uh, portal. If you click on that, you can enter the four or the five-digit zip code or the first six numbers, and it is going to tell you whether or not we Clearfly uh, can provide service to those markets. Lastly, the speed test, and again, is a speed test directly back to the uh, equipment. And um, as I always state, a speed test is really a snapshot of a given moment at a given day. So if you want a really good picture of their internet uh, capability before you sell uh, service to them, you're going to want to run multiple speed tests throughout the day. Uh, hopefully during peak time, so you know within the first half hour of their business opening, um, probably a less peak time is is at lunch when people are at lunch, and then you know the last two hours or so of the day. Other links on the bottom status is really useful, especially if you have customers contacting you saying they're having some issues. If you want to make a quick uh, take a quick look to see if if uh, Clearfly is having any issues, you're going to scroll to the bottom of the, web, the uh, portal. You're going to click status, and it's going to give you a complete breakdown of our network. So if we're having some portal issues, it's going to tell you. If we've got some voice network issues, it'll tell you. Um, same with the CFAX data network or uh, messaging, um, as well as give you a list of any past incidences. And then, of course, the community. Um, I am a big fond uh, believer in the community. So what the community is is a bulletin board. If I'm probably dating myself by saying that or using that term, but it is it is a site where you can post questions, comments, so, or suggestions. Uh, a lot of our to our portal and our products and services have come from the community itself. Maybe you have a customer that is having a unique issue and uh, you want to see if any of the Clearfly partners have experienced that same issue and if they have suggestions, this is a great place to do that. So, uh, you know, please feel free to use the community. It's, you know, it's only as good as the people that use it. So, you know, the more activity uh, that's generated on that, uh, the, more, uh, the more feedback we get from it. So. And that is pretty much it. That is what I wanted to cover today. Again, uh, the purpose of this training was to simply go over the management support dashboard. As always, the contacts within Clearfly. Oh, I went too fast. Let me get back there. Your primary contacts at Clearfly are going to either be Sam Johnson, Bob Jenkins, Rob Lewis. Uh, there's their phone numbers, their direct phone numbers, and their email addresses. And as I said before, my name is Tom Hall, and my contact information is there as well. So uh, feel free to reach out to any of us, uh, any way that we can help you. Uh, that's why we're here. So we look forward to that. Thank you so much, and have a uh, wonderful rest of the day.